So I recently received a comment from a subscriber that asked me to make a video breaking down the entire process of how to import a product from China and what happens during the entire process for you to receive the products to your door. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing in today's video. Let's go. What's going on people? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Sam. And what I do here is break down various different tips and tricks to help you make money online. But in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is walking you through the whole process, everything you need to know from start to finish when it comes to finding a supplier and receiving the products to your front door. I'm gonna break down everything when it comes to importing products from China. Now, if you're new to my channel and you're not aware, I've been buying and selling products from China for the past nine years now. So I've got a lot of experience when it comes to finding the best supplier and the whole process that you're gonna to need to know as a complete beginner. So make sure you stick around to the very end. There's gonna be so much value in it. As always, I don't wanna waste any more time. I wanna get straight into the video. So if you do find any value in the video at any point, don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Hit the bell notification. Let's jump straight into it. Okay, so first things first, what you need to do is contact suppliers. Now there's various different ways that you can find suppliers. The website that I like to use is alibaba.com. I've been using them now for the past six, seven, eight years when it comes to finding suppliers to source me with the products that I wanna sell on my e-commerce stores, whether it's eBay, Amazon, Shopify, I always go to Alibaba first to find a supplier. Now there's other ways that you can find suppliers. You can either find them locally within your own country, or you can use different websites to find various different suppliers that are based in China and other places around the world. But the website that I've used for the past few years is alibaba.com. Now I'm gonna quickly go through and show you exactly what you need to do when it comes to using it. First things first, you're gonna come on the homepage just like this, and you're gonna type in an item that you're looking for. So I'm gonna use the first item that comes to my head just so that I can point out a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Okay, so the item that we're gonna be using in today's example is hair trimmer. So when it comes to finding a supplier for the product that you wanna source, ideally I like to look for suppliers that have been there for a minimum of five or four years. The longer that the supplier has been on Alibaba, the more reliable they're going to be in terms of the quality of their service, the quality of their products. So make sure that you look out for the amount of years that the supply has been on alibaba.com. Now there's a few other things that you can look out for as well. For example, whether or not they're verified. Now what this means is that a third party company has gone to the supplier's warehouse or factory to make sure that they're real and make sure that all of the documentation that they gave to Alibaba is real. So you might wanna also go with a supplier that's verified, but there's a few other things that you need to look out for. So I'm gonna link a video at the end that's gonna break down everything you need to know before contacting a supplier on alibaba.com. So moving on to the second step, which is that you need to decide on one supplier. And from there, they're gonna send you a pro forma invoice. So once you've contacted a few suppliers, you're not just gonna contact one, you're gonna contact multiple. I like to contact every single supplier that is selling the particular product that I'm looking for. And what I'm gonna do is ask them specific questions like for example questions about the quality of the item how long it's going to take for them to ship it the lead time some other important information i'm going to contact various different suppliers and ask them all of these different questions and depending on various different factors i'm either going to continue communicating with some of the suppliers that i've contacted or i'm going to completely stop communicating with others and the reason why i might completely stop talking to some of them is going to be dependent on how long they take to reply their english because i want to be able to make sure that i'm going to be able to communicate with them so if they've got poor english then i may not want to use that supplier it also might be dependent on their prices and it might be dependent on so many other things but i'm gonna focus on the ones that are in the maybe column and those ones what i'm going to do now is assess their pro forma invoices now for those of you that don't know what a pro forma invoice is this is going to be an invoice that's going to have your name your address it's also going to have your eori number on it too as well as the prices of the items that you're buying and the name of the item that you're buying and the total amount, including the shipping. So it's very important that you make sure to look through the entire pro forma invoice and make sure everything is correct. Now, in terms of the EORI number, this is something that you're gonna to need to apply for beforehand. And it's a code that HMRC is gonna give you for you to be able to import from overseas. And it's something that you need to apply for if you're planning on importing products with the intention of reselling them. Now, it's very easy to get. You're just gonna go onto the .gov website and go through this page, read through it, make sure that you have a full understanding of why you need it. So make sure you go through this website, make sure you read through all of it, and then from there, you're now gonna be able to apply for the EORI number. You're gonna give that to your supplier, you're gonna see it on your pro forma invoice, and then from there, once you've checked the invoice, you've made sure that everything is okay, you make sure that all of your details are correct, your mobile phone number is there, just in case the shipping company needs to contact you, make sure that all the details on the invoice are correct. From there, you're now gonna make payment. It's very important to know before sending any money to any supplier in China that you use a payment service that you're gonna be able to request a chargeback if there's any issues. The service that I like to use is Trade Assurance. Trade Assurance is something that Alibaba offers, so you're able to do it directly 
from alibaba.com. You simply need to ask the supplier if they accept trade assurance. If they do, I would suggest using it because it's good when it comes to the exchange rates. And it's also good if you have any issues because you're gonna be able to contact Alibaba within I believe two weeks after receiving your products and let them know if you've got any issues and they'll be able to raise a dispute for you and then deal with it that way and either get your money back or either offer you some different products but at least you've got some sort of option to get your money back. The method that I used to use before is PayPal. Now I still use PayPal now and then. It all depends on the exchange rates because PayPal you're also able to get a chargeback as well if there's any issues. But the only issue with PayPal is that the exchange rates are a little bit high and I've noticed that Alibaba trade assurance is a little bit low. The payment services that you shouldn't use is things like Western Union or a direct bank transfer. You shouldn't use anything that you're not going to be able to get your money back once you've sent it. It's very important to know as a beginner because you don't want to end up losing money at the beginning of your business because it's going to discourage you from wanting to continue growing it this is what happened to me i sent money to a supplier using western union when i first started i had issues with the products and i wasn't able to get my money back so make sure you bear this in mind once you're at this stage when it comes to sending money to your supplier now moving on to step four which is that the supplier will give your products to a forwarder. So the way that it's worked over the years that I've been using suppliers in China is that the supplier will give the products to a freight forwarder and then the freight forwarder will now give it to the shipping company. So the forwarder is a middleman and it basically connects the supplier to the shipping companies. So during my years of importing products from China, I've never ever had any communication with a freight forwarder before. I've only spoken to the supplier and the supplier has direct communication with the freight forwarder and they're gonna give all your information in terms of your name, your address, all the information on the pro forma, they're gonna give it to the freight forwarder and then the freight forwarder is gonna pass your information as well as the package over to the shipping companies. Now in China, there's various different shipping companies that you can use, but the ones that I've used is FedEx, UPS, DHL, maybe EMS sometimes, TNT. These are some of the main shipping companies that I've used when it comes to importing stuff from China into the UK. And bear in mind, I only like to focus on importing products through air freight. I don't like to do it through sea freight because there's two ways that you're gonna be able to import your products from China. You can either use air delivery or sea delivery, which means that if you use air delivery, it's gonna come on a plane and it's gonna take a quicker time for you to receive your goods. However, if you use sea delivery, it's gonna take way longer. It's gonna take maybe 30 days, 45 days for you to receive your products, but it's a little bit cheaper when it comes to the shipping costs. So for me personally, I like to use air delivery because I believe it's a little bit more quicker and a little bit more efficient and I just prefer doing it that way. But if you wanna use sea freight, you can also let your supplier know and they're gonna be able to give it to the forwarder who's now gonna give it to the sea company. So that's something you need to bear in mind once you're on step number four. Moving on to the fifth step, which is that the shipping company will send you an invoice. So whichever shipping company the freight forwarder is gonna give your products to, once they receive it and once they process it through their system, they're going to send you an invoice. Now this invoice is gonna consist of different fees that you're gonna to need to pay, but it's gonna be mainly import fees and duty fees, which is gonna be all of the taxes that you're gonna to have to pay when it comes to importing a product from China into your country. You're not gonna to have to pay any shipping fees to the shipping company. This would have already been paid to the supplier when they send you the pro forma invoice. You're gonna pay for the price products as well as the shipping. However, to the shipping company, you're gonna pay the import taxes and charges. Now, some companies, they will send you the invoice and they will need the money before they actually deliver the product. So they will hold your products before they actually deliver it to you. However, some other ones will deliver the products to you and then they'll send you an invoice in the post and then you're gonna to need to pay it within 30 days or a certain amount of time. And it's very important to make sure that you pay this invoice as soon as possible because what most people will do is that they'll try to ignore it. But if you do that, you're gonna get blacklisted and the delivery company is not gonna deliver to you or what they're gonna do is hold all of your future shipments. So I like to pay the invoices straight away to avoid any delays with any future shipments that I'm expecting. Now, if you wanna know how much you should expect to pay in import duty and taxes, there's a website that I've been using over the years, which is called Simply Duty. It's free to use, but you're only gonna get around five free calculations per day. Now, the way that it works is that you're gonna enter the country that you're importing from. So in this case, we're importing from China. And the currency that we're using, just to make it simple, is USD. And then we're importing to the United Kingdom. Again, just to keep it simple, let's put USD. And then you're gonna enter the product that you're selling. Now it's very important to make sure that you put an accurate description of your product so that this website is gonna be able to tell you the amount of taxes that you're gonna to have to pay. Because if you're not aware, different products have different tariffs and different rates when it comes to how much the government is gonna charge you. But just to make this video simple, I'm gonna put Bluetooth, speaker and let's say the product value in terms of the unit cost of the item that you're ordering is five dollars and you're ordering only 10 pieces shipping cost we're going to put 
$50 and we're going to leave insurance at zero and then we're going to click on calculate import duty and taxes. So as you can see, it's showing us that we're only going to have to pay 20 USD in terms of the VAT that we're going to have to pay. And we're not going to have to pay any duty because it's under the threshold in terms of the numbers that I put into the calculator. So it's very important to make sure that you check this website before importing any products if you are a beginner because I used to use it at the start every single time I imported a product because I didn't really know what to expect in terms of the amount that I needed to pay. However, now because I've imported so many products, I kind of have an idea of how much the VAT and the duty is gonna be. And then finally moving on to step six is that you're gonna receive your shipment five to 10 days later. So in terms of this estimate that I just put right here, it's gonna be dependent on what shipping company you use. Some shipping companies are quicker than others. For example, I know that FedEx sometimes can be really quick. However, UPS is sometimes quicker than FedEx. DHL might take a little bit longer, but sometimes they're quick too. So it all depends on the shipping company and it all depends on what's going on in the world at that time. If there's nothing happening, then sometimes it's a lot more quicker because it all depends on how many planes they have available as well. Like for example, right now, the world is going through a little bit of a crisis in terms of the whole rush and Ukraine issues that are happening and that's having a ripple effect on various different parts of the economy in terms of fuel and in terms of things like that so it's affected the way that shipping companies are able to do stuff however if everything is normal in the world and nothing's happening then it's a lot more quicker so it all depends on you know various different factors but over the many years of me importing stuff from China sometimes it could take two days if I send the money to the supplier on a Thursday I may receive my products on a Monday however other times even if there's nothing happening in the world I may receive my products two weeks later so this is something you need to be mindful of before you send the money. Just make sure that you get the tracking number from the supplier so that you're able to monitor it every single day because there may be an issue where the package is held up in a specific country. For example, there's been multiple shipments that I've ordered where the package has been held up in Dubai for whatever reason or it's been held up in Hong Kong or various different parts of the world and then I need to call up and get the problem sorted. So it's very important to make sure that you monitor the tracking every single day and make sure that it's not being held up in a specific country because if it is you're going to be able to raise a case and then from there they're going to be able to look into it for you and possibly help you locate the package so those are the basic steps that you need to be aware of if you're a beginner that's looking to import products from china into your own country now there's so much more that goes into it i made a video recently breaking down a lot of the things that you need to know a lot of the little details that you need to be aware of. So I'm gonna leave that video right there. Make sure you watch that video straight after this video because it's gonna give you a better insight of what you need to do when it comes to finding the best supplier and sending your money to them in the best possible way. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Hit the bell notification so that YouTube can let you know when a new video has been released. And if you want me to make a video answering your comment and giving you advice on what you need help with, put it in the comments down below and I'll add it to my list of videos that I'm working on. And if you wanna watch a webinar that I made recently where I brought broke down my story of how I went from zero to $3,000 per day in sales, building up my e-commerce business, then click the first link in the description down below. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you stay safe out there. Peace.